Hey guys, today I'm going to be breaking down the best app you can get if you have a drone, which is essential, something which I use every day, which is the UAV Forecast. We're going to be doing a complete breakdown of this app today, going through all the different settings and features within this app. So this app is on the App Store, it's also on Android, and the best part of this app is it's actually free, and it's absolutely brilliant. Something which I use regularly before every single flight, I'll use this app. A lot of people may have already had this, it's got really good ratings on the App Store, you don't need to pay for it. There is a premium part of the app, but I've just used the free version. So I'm gonna open this up now, and I'm gonna go, go through exactly what to do. But if you have any drone, any drone whatsoever, or even any other remote control aircraft, you need this app. Let's go through it. So when you first open the app, this is the screen that you'll be greeted with. And I'm gonna show you this. This is just downloaded like it would be for anybody else. So I've not changed any of these settings. This is just how it, how it is stock. So the first thing you wanna do is in the top left hand corner here, you can change the location. So once you're in here, you can actually click on the arrow there and that will pinpoint to the location that you're at. Or you can simply just click on this bar here and you can search for any location that maybe you're going to to see what that weather's like. So I've just got it set at Blackpool in case I want to go to Blackpool shortly and that is where the weather is going to be like in this location right now. So as you can see, the weather in Blackpool right now is awful. Typical British weather, we're having really bad weather at the moment. So within these different columns here, you have different stats of what that weather condition is like, and you can customize it to your own needs. So obviously here you say not good to fly. Your ideal part is you want all these squares here to be green. If you have red areas here, that's why it's then telling you it's not safe to fly and you shouldn't do. So don't always go off this app like everything needs to be green. It also depends on which drone you have as well. So with the weather app here, you click on that and that will show you what the weather conditions are like. So at the moment, it is really windy. So that's obviously the symbol you're getting. So we'll just click off that here. Now the main focus points I look at the most are the wind, the gusts and the wind direction. Obviously, if it's raining or not, you can tell that yourself. But the wind and the gust is what are essential, especially if you are flying a small drone like the Mavic Mini 2, Mini 1, or even the Air 2. And you need to obviously be really careful of what this is like here. So by looking at the wind here, 34 miles an hour at 400 feet. So if you click on that here, that is at 400 feet. The reason why it's on that is that's the max altitude you can go within the UK at 400 feet, 120 meters. Now what you can do is you can change this and move this slider to what you want. So if you want to see what the wind is like at ground level, it's 24 miles per hour. If you want to be flying at say 150 feet, it's 29 miles per hour. And you can move this slider as much as you want to the left or the right. So if I want to be flying around about 300 feet, then it's going to be 33 miles per hour winds. So it isn't just the wind that's the problem, it's also the gusts which you need to concentrate on the most and that's how you potentially could get a flyaway with your drone. The gusts at that same height of 48 miles per hour, there is no way this drone can handle 48 miles an hour gusts. If this is just hovering in place or even trying to fly into that wind, it's gonna get blown out to the side in the direction of this wind is going, which we'll get to. So again, looking at the gusts, you can check to see what it's like and then you can determine whether it's actually safe to fly or not. So I can tell 48 mile hour gusts, 33 mile hour winds. If I were to take this out now and fly, it's going to be completely wasted, no go, unless I stay really low. Even if I stayed really low by checking it, by moving that slider there, if I kept it just at 50 feet, we've still got 43 mile hour gusts at 50 feet. So it's just not worth it. So on that situation, do not go out and fly. But the reason why this app is so good, if you didn't have this app, you could just look out and go, oh, it might not look too windy or the winds aren't that too bad. But the gusts actually are so much, they're almost double the wind. And that's where people experience flyaways with this drone. And one of the most common reasons for a flyaway is because people haven't planned to see what that wind condition is like. And with a small drone like this, that is the biggest enemy to a drone is that wind. Make sure you're planning beforehand. You should never fly without using this app. It's so, it's free 
and it's so easy to use just by concentrating on this it takes literally 10 seconds and then you can determine whether it's safe to fly or not and also the most crucial part before you start flying which is this next bit now so the most crucial part of this app which you want to concentrate on the most is the wind direction you want to be always flying into the wind so by clicking on wind direction here make sure your compass is selected on and make sure this app is on the actual phone or tablet you're going to be using for that flight so it's using the compass of your actual phone or tablet so once that's clicked on press ok and you can see now that in this current situation the wind direction is blowing towards the east you want to be flying always into the wind that is because if you was flying at a distance then you can make sure that you're getting back because you've got the wind on your side and also if you were to then fly into the wind and all of a sudden you didn't realize or the gusts suddenly got a lot larger then that drone will will be flying towards the west and then if that wind was to then push the drone back it will push it back towards your location if you was to fly in this location towards the east and that wind got picked up or it was worse it would just keep flying this way and there is no chance at all of you being able to get that drone back to your location so it's imperative you should always fly into that wind direction and by moving the iPad or the tablet or the phone whichever you've got you can actually tell that wind direction you always want to be flying in a straight line to into the wind so those three boxes there are the most crucial boxes that you need to concentrate on and they're so simple to just quickly look navigate look at the wind direction make sure that arrow is facing towards where you are so you're flying into that wind and you're good to go we'll just quickly go over some of the other points in these boxes and then we'll move over to the other settings here so you've got the sunrise and sunset times so if you're wanting to get a really good um, sunrise or sunset shots then you know the times you need to be up or in that location you've got the temperature the current temperature of where you are and you can adjust for the wind chills you can have the different celsius or fahrenheit by clicking on them you can customize that you've got the chance of rain here in that location you've also got how many satellites you've got in that area so the satellites are good visibility is good the cloud cover is good you've also got the storm index ratings here the satellites so these areas here most of the time these should always be in green if i see you're in a location where you've got no satellites you're not going to get gps satellite lock on the drone if you're flying a dji drone so it's not advisable to fly move location try again but these three boxes here these red boxes these are the most crucial ones now if one of these boxes was red it doesn't automatically mean god i should not fly there's no way there sometimes you know this could be saying here max wind 20 miles an hour but this drone is capable of flying in winds higher than 20 miles an hour so you could move that slider to say 31 miles an hour and then if that was 30 miles an hour gusts it will go green you'll see now that that wind is 26 miles an hour so it's allowing us to then fly this by saying yep it's it's green it's not bright green but it's advisable you can fly but when you look at the gusts you're thinking now nah, I'm not going to bother because it's 43 miles an hour winds don't go and try it now the second part of this app which I find really useful and again dead helpful is on this side here you've got map once you click on map here it will load up your location but also show you in this corner here the no fly zones and the area that you can fly and the areas that you can't and any restrictions so if I just pinch to zoom out here you'll see in this location here we've just got absolutely loads of different colors and what do all them mean well there's a little chart here in the bottom right hand corner which you can see and that tells you whereabouts you are in relation to any no fly zones airports medium airports so if we just zoom back in here you'll see that within this area now we've got a blue circle and an orange circle in the location that that Blackpool is in there where that pinpoint marker is so if we click on one of those markers here you'll, it will come up medium airport Blackpool airport that's because this is in this location here so you would know that in this area you can fly but you've got to be aware that you are near an airport if you was in this area so we're now going to be moving imagine that check marker was here so pinpointed that marker there so we're now within the red circle so if you go on the red circle can you still fly well you can go it says here you get another check marker so that says dji no fly zone blackpool airport inner circle is a no fly zone which is this circle here the outer circle is an altitude limit only 
So this is now, you're able to fly in this zone here, the outer circle, but you will have an altitude limit. So that limit obviously depends on the airport and the location, but it's usually a lot less, sometimes maximum 40 meters, 50 meters, sometimes even less. It's not advisable at all to fly in areas like this without permission from air traffic control because obviously that risk of any aircraft coming to this airport. So if you're in this area, don't bother, just go and find another location in a safer area. For instance, here you could just go and pinpoint near the tower and then you can fly within that area there. Still within a circle, but it's a lot safer and you don't have as many restrictions in this area. So by zooming out here, what you can also do is you can see all the different locations and restrictions for anywhere within that location you could be going to. Now obviously here in the UK, it's got it, but also if you was to maybe go on holiday, you can then look about the country I'm going to, what restrictions have we got in that country, and can I fly? So let's say, right, I'm gonna go to Amsterdam soon because I like Amsterdam. So if we zoom into here, I think, right, I'm gonna be right in the main center here. So if you think, right, I'm gonna get a hotel here and I want to fly in this area. Well, there's a purple logo here. What does that mean? By clicking on it, it will say DJI no fly zone and then it says Amsterdam Arena. So you can't fly within that area because there's an arena there and it's a no fly zone. By clicking on every circle, you get another idea. Obviously here, you're in a no fly zone, large airport, Amsterdam airport, Schiphol airport, and this again is a no fly zone. So by using this map, you can tell either where you are or where you're gonna be going to any restrictions within that area and the whole world is covered on this. It's absolutely brilliant, again, to see what restrictions you've got in that area. Is it safe to fly with the height of the altitude that you can fly at just by forward planning using this app? So we've looked at the map, we've looked at the conditions here. So if you click on the next icon here, which is forecast, and this will give you an up-to-date and accurate forecast from the time it currently is to the, all that day and the following day. If you wanna get really technical, you can look at the next one, which is wind profile. And this tells you all the different wind speeds and gust speeds and temperatures at different altitudes throughout that day. Again, the months I use the most are the conditions. This just gives you a really quick breakdown. And then also the map by zooming in and out about where you're going, that's great. Also this app, I am not sponsored or been asked to review this whatsoever. I just use this app daily and I just think a lot of people have been asking, you know, what um, app do you recommend for checking the weather? What app do you use? What app have you shown on some of your videos? And I said I'll do a breakdown video of how to use it and my recommendations. So this is this is basically it. I'm not actually sponsored or asked to do this, but I really highly recommend anyone go and do it. So within the settings here, you can change different settings. So the threshold settings at the top, again, as I said before, you can change your max wind speed. You can change that slider up and down, keep that around about 30 miles an hour. And you can change settings here, but just like you can within the conditions, but you can change them all in one here if you want. You've got the no-fly zone settings, and this, these are all checked on as standard, so I won't change any of them. And these just show you all the restrictions for different airports, no-fly zones, etc. You can change the language, you've got the unit settings if you want to change it to different miles per hour, kilometers, meters per second, the altitude, feet to meters. You can change all that to your own customization. And then the next bit here, theme, I've got it on auto, but you can have it on dark mode, or you could have it on light, so I just have to keep it on auto. You can change the colorblind palette. And then all these areas here, I just keep them the same, I don't really bother with these. You can register an account if you want to, and there's also an option there to pay for a year, which is £20.49, and that just unlocks a few more features uh, within this app. So overall, guys, this app is something I use all the time, no matter what drone I'm flying with. Even messing around with FPV drones, I still use this app to see where I am, the location, and the actual wind speeds and direction, and it's crucial for any drone pilot to go and get this app get familiar with it and then use it every single time before you fly. And then hopefully the stats of people losing their drones in flyaways, especially with the wind, will come down. So go and check it out guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you found it helpful, comment down below. If you've got this app, let me know what you think about it. Do you like it? Think it could be better? And I'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.